Hey, today we're talking about refraction. So what is refraction? It might not be something that you've heard a bunch about. Uh, refraction is essentially something that happens when light moves from one medium or material into another. So an example, if light is moving from air to water or from air to glass or from water to glass. I mean, I could list all different kinds of mediums and materials, but when it moves from one material to another, it ends up bending if the two mediums have different densities. And specifically, I'm talking about something called optical density, which is similar to density you learned about in chemistry, but it has to do with how light travels through it. Um, and it could be slightly different in number. But anyways, we don't deal with the numbers of it. We just talk about whether the material is more dense or less dense. And what happens is the light bends because it travels faster in one medium than the other medium. And specifically, it travels faster in less dense medium. So the lower the density, the faster light is going to move through it. And as it moves to a more dense medium, then it ends up actually bending as a result or vice versa because it's moving slower. So the bending of light as it passes from one medium to the next is known as refraction. So how does refraction work? Well, we're going to look at the two different scenarios that can occur. We're going to look at moving from a lower to a higher optical density, and then the other way around, from a higher to a lower optical density. And this can be somewhat confusing, but honestly, uh, there's an analogy that works so well for understanding this that we're going to go through in a minute. So if this is confusing, just hold on. It will probably make sense in a moment. So when light travels from one medium into a denser one, it will bend towards the normal line. So yes, we are still drawing a normal line, just like reflection for refraction. And that normal line is perpendicular to the surface of the material it's coming into. So when I look at the normal line, if it's going to a denser medium, it's going to end up uh, bending more towards the normal as it travels from the low to the high density medium. Thus, as a result, angle of incidence is larger than angle of refraction because the refracted angle is going to be smaller towards the normal. This happens because a light in the denser medium ends up moving slower than in the less dense medium. So let's look at a diagram to try to make sense of this, and then we're going to talk about our analogy. So here we have an incident ray that's coming in Okay, from a less dense medium, let's say air, to a more dense medium, like let's say water or glass. So as the incident ray comes in and then hits the new medium, okay, as it transfers to the more dense medium, it ends up actually curving towards the normal. So you can see that this angle of incidence is much larger than this angle of refraction. Now, angle of incidence, we normally show with a lowercase i to illustrate this. And then angle of refraction is not normally capital R, but we normally use a lowercase r for that. So the i is going to be greater than r when moving from lower to higher density. So as it goes from lower to higher density. So let's talk about the analogy because I think it's really going to help. The analogy is if we talk about a car racing that's going from, let's say, asphalt or road to mud or vice versa, then we actually just kind of think about what the tires would do as it's transferring from one material to another. So mud would represent like our really dense, sticky material. It's more dense. Well, the road would be less dense. It's easy to travel through. And then imagine what the tires do as it transfers at an angle from, you know, going to the road or to the mud, and we can figure out what happens. So let me show you a diagram and act this out with a little toy car. So let's say, and just bear with me here as I struggle with the technology, let's say that we have a angle of incidence that's like this. Okay, so here is my angle of incidence, my ray of incidence, my incident ray. So now if I take a look at what the car does, it's going from lower density, so like a road, to higher density, mud. So as this car travels, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then it hits the mud right here, that tire 
the front right tire hits the mud while this tire is still on road. Well, you can imagine what would happen. This tire would get more stuck and start spinning while this tire would keep on going just fine. So at this time, this um, driver's side, uh, which side would that be? Yes, driver's side tire. I'm still actually confused if that is the driver's side, which seems so silly. Driver's side tire ends up moving more and more, which causes it to actually turn like this. And then as my car continues, it's closer to the normal. So again, the front left tire, because it's still on road, it's still on asphalt, has more grip, and it's going to zoom ahead while this tire is stuck in the mud, which means that it's going to get closer to the normal. So my angle of refraction, my refracted ray, would be closer to the normal. So this would be my R. Okay, so that's going from lower density, the road, to higher density, the mud. Hopefully that makes some sense. So what about the other way? What if I'm moving from higher to lower optical density? Well, in this case, when light travels from one medium into a less dense one, it will bend away from the normal line. The opposite occurs. Thus, angle of incidence is smaller than the angle of refraction. So everything's just reversed. The light in the less dense medium moves faster. So going again to a diagram, here I have my incident ray. It hits my less dense material. And then because it's going faster, it now curves more away from the normal. So it refracts like this. Let's again take a look at the car analogy because I think that helps it make the most sense. So let's say we have an angle of incidence from higher density going to lower density. So here's our car again. Let's just change the angle slightly of that car. And it's coming along that angle of incidence and it's all in the mud, right? So all tires are going the same in the mud. And then right here, this tire is now on the road, a lower density material. It's now on the road while this one's still in the mud. So all of a sudden the car starts getting a ton of traction on this tire, but not on this tire. So it's gonna turn like this and then it will continue on. So when I draw my line, it would be like this. So here is my angle of incidence and here is my angle of refraction. Just a reminder that when we're drawing these angles, it's always between the normal and the ray. Okay, so make sure it's between the normal line, remember this is the normal, and the ray itself. So when I'm going from higher to lower, my I is going to be less than my R. Okay, so a few questions for us to try to figure out. Light moving into a less dense medium will bend blank normal line. This is a scenario we just dealt with. Light moving into a less dense medium will bend away from the normal line. So it's gonna move away from the normal. Light moving into a denser medium will bend blank normal line. Well, this one would be towards the normal line. Okay, light moves faster in a blank type of medium. So where does it move faster? Well, in a less dense type of medium. And finally, what does R represent? And I wanna change this to little r. It's the angle of refraction. Okay, so now let's take a look at a more complex scenario. What if light is traveling from a medium to a more dense one, and then afterwards it goes back to the first medium? So this would be, for example, air traveling through glass, okay? Like normal, or not air, but uh, light traveling from air to glass and then out again to air. And how does that actually distort our view of things as we look at it? So we're gonna walk through this together and try it out. So here we have our angle of incidence. Here's my normal. I should have drawn that all the way through. So here's my angle of incidence. So now let's take our car and start moving it towards and imagine what's going to happen. So right now it's on the road. It's on a less dense medium. And then as soon as we get to the mud, 
right? The more dense medium, this tire gets stuck while this tire is still going. So it's going to turn towards the normal. So now it's going to continue like this. So let's draw this as my refracted ray. Now I end up with a different normal and ray. So I'm going to move this aside. Now I've got a normal that's right here. This is my incidence ray for coming out. And here's my car. So it comes to there. This tire is now on asphalt and it's able to move more. Well, this tire is still stuck in the mud. So this is going to move forward like this, right? And then it's going to come out like that. And in fact, this line and this line should have essentially the same angle. So I don't love how I drew that. It should be a little bit higher up. But this and this ray should have the exact same angle. And this is now my angle of refraction. Okay, so that would be how it comes into and then out of glass. So kind of interesting. So here's an image showing how this can actually change our perception, especially when we're looking at things underwater. So this would be the virtual image as seen by our eye when we're looking at a fish underwater. Because of the refraction of the rays coming from the fish, right, because light bounces off of the fish and then comes to our eyeballs, it refracts once it hits the surface of the light. And when it goes from a more dense medium, the water, to the less dense medium of the air, then it's going to move away from the normal. So as a result, we think the fish is here. That's the virtual image we see, which means not real, but where we think it is. But actually the fish is down lower. It's down here. And you might have experienced this swimming and stuff where things don't seem how they do, right? Like how they appear. They don't seem quite right. Uh, here's another example. If I take a look at, uh, let's say, this chest, it looks like it's here, but because of the refraction of light, it's actually much, much lower. So when we look at things in water, they're not necessarily where they appear. They could be somewhere else. Air temperature and refraction. This is something that I'm sure you've observed, but maybe didn't actually understand the reason why it happens. Refraction also takes place when we deal with different temperatures of air. So because air gets hot or cool in different conditions, and air can be different temperatures, right? Like for example, right by hot asphalt, it's going to be hotter uh, than away from the asphalt because the asphalt's absorbing light, and then as a result, getting very hot and heating up the air. So when you take a look at air that is hot, it will be less dense than air that is cold. And this actually results in refraction of light as it's just traveling through different types of air. This is the reason why we actually see this kind of road mirage uh, on a hot summer's day. You'll never see this in winter uh, unless it's incredibly sunny and the road is clear and black and it's absorbing the light. But generally, you're not going to see it in winter. You'd only see it in summer. And the reason why is because the asphalt is heating up. It's then causing the air right by the road to be very hot. And as it travels through that air, it refracts or bends the light. And what you're actually seeing is an image of the sky. So when I look at this right here, that's actually light from the sky that has refracted as it hits less dense air towards our eyes. So it's not reflection, it's not reflecting off of the road, it's refraction, and we're actually seeing rays from the sky. That's what we're seeing. And this all has to do just with the fact that we have different densities of air um, you know, in this scenario. Now, this is also responsible for this kind of phenomenon where we have all these like bendy, uh, wavy lines around a lot of heat. It's the same thing. We have different temperatures of air. And as a result, you see this kind of heat blur, blur where uh, light travels differently through the different temperatures of air. So it ends up just being like weird looking. And I'm sure you've seen this kind of thing. Uh, even when you light a candle, you'll see around the candle flame this kind of refraction happening uh, where it's like shimmering and that's due to essentially this kind of effect where you have different temperatures of air, different densities, and so light refracts differently 
in those different densities of air. We're not going to analyze any diagrams around this. It's just important that we understand that these uh, observations are due to refraction. So at this point, we've learned about three different kinds of behaviors of light that you should know. We know about absorption. We talked about absorption in the first topic, and that's when light changes into some other kind of energy. Uh, for example, typically thermal energy occurs mostly on rough, dark, opaque surfaces, and sunlight is usually reflected off the surface, which is why we can see it, right? Um, but that is absorption. Reflection is when light bounces off the surface and travels in a new direction. It occurs best when light hits a smooth, shiny surface. That's when we can see images. And some light is usually absorbed, but not nearly as much. And then refraction is when we have light traveling from one medium to another, and then it ends up as a result going in a different direction. The light bends. This occurs when light strikes a different transparent medium, and some light is usually reflected off of the surface as well. Maybe you've seen it where you have on water both refraction and reflection occurring. So here's diagrams of all three. Refraction is the spending of light going from one medium to another and then another. Reflection is when it reflects off the surface. And then absorption is when it absorbs into the material and ends up converting to a different form of energy. If you want to see both reflection and refraction, we probably can see it right here. Yes, we can see reflection of the pencil on the top of the water, and we can also see refraction in that this line does not line up with this line, and that's due to the bending of light as it travels from the water to the air. All right, well, that's refraction. Have a good day.